So let's get started. Does the type of self-talk people engage in influence self-control? Um, our first crack at this, uh, and my favorite uh, study in which we've looked at this, was to bring um, undergraduate students at the University of Michigan into the laboratory. And what we did is we, we, we brought them in for a study uh, in which we tried to induce stress using the most powerful tool that we had at our disposal as experimenters for inducing stress among human beings in a way that our human subjects review committee would allow us to use. And Thad Polk is actually, are you still the chair of the IRB? So Thad, Thad is the chair of the IRB. So, so, so I always have to tread carefully here. Um, we induce stress as a caveat to see how these mechanisms work, right, in really hot emotional contexts. So ultimately we can help people, not just to be mean. Any guesses about what the most powerful way of inducing stress in the lab among, among humans, undergrads, is? Go ahead. Loud noise is often, it is, is used, um, but public speaking. there you go. We can get better in public speaking. What I'm doing right now is, is usually the answer. So we bring people in for a study and we tell them that today we're gonna ask you to give a speech on why you're ideally qualified to land your dream job. We tell them that we want you to talk about your strengths and weaknesses, and importantly, we want you to provide real world examples that illustrate how you've overcome your weaknesses in ways that perfectly position you to land this job. We give people, uh, we, we then after we give them those instructions, we take people uh, down the hall into a room that really resembles a, a very, it's a stark cubicle. Um, there's no paper or pencil, there's no computer, there's nothing on the walls, it's all white. And we then just give people five minutes to prepare. And it's a really difficult task. This has been used in dozens and dozens of experiments over the years. It's a potent elicitor of a stress response. And so this is what we do to all of our participants. That's the way we induce stress. What we then do is we uh, build in an experimental manipulation. And by that I mean, essentially by the flip of a coin, we randomly assign people to one of two conditions. We tell people in our first group, I'll call this the first person group. You know, one of the things we're interested in this study is the different ways that people report preparing them psychologically prior to giving a public speech. Some people report trying to work through and understand their feelings in the first person, so that's what we'd like you to do. In other words, ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Use the first person pronoun I as much as possible. And we've got I, big, bold, black letters on the instructions. We then give people three minutes to do that. In the non-first person group, the other half of the participants who are randomly assigned to this condition, they get the same basic cover story. You know, one of the things we're interested in is how people report preparing themselves psychologically prior to giving a public speech. But then we have a slight modification. Some people report using their own name and other non-first person pronouns prior to giving a public speech. So that's what we'd like you to do. In other words, and then if I'm the subject, the instruction to me would be, ask yourself, why is Ethan feeling this way? So in one condition, it's why am I feeling this way? In the other condition, it's why is Ethan feeling this way? That's how we're manipulating this, this self-talk mechanism. So people take three minutes to think about their experience and their emotions using those different parts of speech. And when they're done, an experimenter comes back into the lab, into the room that they're seated in, and they then take the, the subject down the hall to another room. And when they enter the room, there's a little masking tape X on the floor. And they tell the participant, stand right there. And then seated in front of them are uh, two or three, I forget the exact number, um, confederates. So these are um, people who are, they're essentially actors. They're part of our, of our production, part of the design to maintain stress. Uh, they're dressed very nicely. Um, they're trained to have stoic, slightly disapproving facial expressions. Um, if you want to get a sense of what that looks like, just scan around the room and get a good sense. You're actually a very nice crowd. Um, but they're trained to be, be tough, you know, a little bit of a snarl. And um, right, right between them, just for good measure, we, we, at the basement of the psych department uh, in East Hall, we have this, this room Patty and Thad, has this room ever been cleaned out, the supply room for equipment? I mean, it goes back 
15, 20 years, we never throw anything away. And so we were able to get a tripod with one of those old school video cameras, not an iPad pin-like camera, but rather the one where you can have a huge lens, you could see your reflection in it, essentially. And that's seated right in front of the participant blinking. As, again, just to maintain the production, which is a really an important part of what we're doing. And then it's go time, and participants actually deliver their speeches. When they're done, when the study's over, we take the, the videos of participants' speeches, and we have judges who are who don't know anything about the, the, the um, circumstances surrounding the study, the predictions that we have, or the, importantly, the condition that participants are in, we have these judges rate participants' performance for how uh, confident, nervous, and overall persuasive they were. And so this is an index of how well they did. Uh, and what we find, uh, as you could see here on this graph, um, higher scores on this on the scale show better performance. And what we see is that participants in the non-first person group, the people who are using their name, they're rated as having delivered more persuasive speeches, which to me is a consequential finding. It's consequential because all other things being equal about participants in these two conditions, it's participants in this non-first person group, those people using their own name, they're the ones who are gonna be landing the job that they're interviewing for. So it's a consequential behavioral finding.